Thunderdome boxing talk. Alright, I meant to do this video yesterday. I forgot. Um, anyway, Danny Garcia. Looking. Well, first, Danny Garcia is out of the 140 pound division. Um, I guess he officially left. You know, we know he vacated the WPC. Um, I don't know exactly. Um, I, I know he's up in the box, right? What welterweight rankings now? He's out of the 140 rankings. Um, and you, when you really look at it, you know, he, Danny Garcia, did he really leave? Um, you know, can, can he make 140 still? Yeah, I definitely think he can. Um, you know, because they've been saying, we remember when he was having a, uh, fights at 140. You know, his dad was saying, you know, they were chasing that Mayweather fight, a big money fight for a long time. And that they basically could go up to 147 a long time ago. Um, so it's not that... And he was getting big. You'd see him at the fights uh, after his fight in between fights where he'd be blown up and big. But he'd still get down to 140. Um, you know, plus his 147, even the, a good division for Danny. I think he gets fucking mollywhopped at 147. You know, I don't know who the hell he's going to beat at 147 outside of Pauli Malinazzi. Uh, you know, so 140 is his division. Um, yeah, he can still make it. You know, he's got to have discipline. You fucking watch what you eat and, you know, stay 20 pounds outside of the 140 weight. And, yeah, you're you're going to be good. Um, you know, the, the thing is, he more than likely vacated out of fear of the 140-pound division and business. You know, just because of that O is what I really mean when I say business is that O. Um, you know, the, who at 140 out of the top names does Danny even beat? Honestly, like none of them, none of them. Uh, I say, you know, I mean, come on. I, I just, who does he really fuck with? And the same goes for 147. Uh, Danny's going to take his first loss real soon. You know, he, his first legit loss on his record. Um, you know. Cherry picks and controversial decisions is, is what the dude's known for now. You know, it's fucked up uh, for him. Not, I mean, not for the fans or anything. And, you know, the, that kind of shit ain't helping his skills. It's, it's just not, you know. And, and it's the only reason he still still has that zero. Um, you know, technically, I scored two fights against him. You know, Herrera and Lamar Peters and... Now, you know, you might have not scored both of them against them, but I'm sure you scored one of them out of those two against them, you know. Um, they, they paid Postal step-aside money, you know, twice, as far as I know, um, twice to to not fight them. And, you know, they wanted they they took Rod Salka instead for the one time, uh, and Lamar Peterson, you know, neither fight had either title, you know, no titles on the line for either of them fights. Um, and, you know, not only did they pay Postal step aside money, especially for this Lamont Peterson fight, but, you know, he was, Postal was guaranteed, um, you know, a crack at that WBC title and pretty much Garcia, you know, now granted it was the title, but would he have taken the step aside money? Um, if he didn't think it was going to be Garcia, probably he would have. But, you know, you want you want to beat Danny Garcia. That's where your name is going to come from, right? Beating the hyped up, undefeated, uh, ring magazine champ as well. Because now once you beat him, if you beat Danny even just for that WBC uh, title on contract, you're still getting the ring magazine title, all right, the ring title. That's That also matters. Um, granted, yeah, we're getting the Matisse fight, so, you know, it, it don't matter, you know, whatever. Um, that's a good fight in itself, so it's like, whatever. If you don't want to fight anyone, then get the fuck out of here, you know. Let the real fighters who actually want, uh, you know, the, the want to fight for their pride and fight the best fighters out there, let them go at it. You know, and, and get up on out of here, you know, it's like, Not only, I don't know which fight is a bigger money fight. Uh, I do actually. 
the, the Garcia fight would have had to have been a bigger money fight for Postal. Because I can't see Postal getting big money for the Matisse fight, even though it is a you know a known fight, a, a fan fight that we want. Um, he's going to be... I just don't see him bringing that same amount of money. You know, Danny Garcia and Postal would have been you know, if that fight was next, would have been a headlining PBC card. And we know the, the main eventers of PBC get paid well. Um, the only problem is Danny Garcia would have got beat. You know, that that's the way he would have gotten beat. Um, you know, Postal wouldn't have took off them early rounds, which I still thought Lamont won because the only rounds I didn't give uh, to Lamont were the rounds where I thought he, like, ran too much, where he would, uh, you know, dodge Danny's punches but not make him pay for it. Uh, and so them rounds I couldn't give to him because I thought he just I thought he did run too much. He could have easily taken them on my scorecards if he would have just let his hands go. You know, just not even. I know he was just trying to take a little steam uh, out of Garcia, but there was times when you know Garcia would clearly whiff. He would slip and wouldn't throw anything back. Even if you just throw one punch back, throw something back. Um, and he didn't. So, you know, I couldn't give him the rounds. But the rounds where he was, you know, even just letting his hands go a little, he, number one, he was outlanding, Daddy. And he was controlling the pace. I mean, when you want to talk ineffective aggression, that's a good fight to look at. You know, Danny had clear ineffective aggression. Um, and you could tell he did it. He had ineffective aggression for 11 rounds. Because look, going into the 12th, Danny looked like he was in a 15 rounder going into round 15. And Lamont looked like. He was going into the second round of any fight. Clearly ineffective aggression, you know. So Postal gets a tougher fight, number one, because Matisse is a tougher fight now. Um, he's not going to get the money he was going to get. So, you know, it kind of screwed over Postal, but at least he does get that shot now. You know, he does get the shot. Uh, so, you know, and we get a good-ass fight. Um where both guys are going to train their asses off um, and put it all on the line. Matisse nor Postal has any, you know, give in them. That's going to be a good-ass fight. Uh, now, for Danny, I mean, if this Pauly fight really materializes, I know it's the one they're looking at. And the fucked-up thing is, with Heyman, like, when they make these fights that the fans completely are like, whoa, 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 no one wants this fight. They'll, you know, other promotional companies will sometimes, they'll be like, really? You know, like, this is that bad? All right, scratch it, scratch it. But Heyman, they're like, you don't want it? You hate it? Oh, well, it's the one you're getting. Every They never, like, fuck it, we'll scratch it. You know, and this is a clear case. No one wants this fight. No one asked for this fight. Uh, no one even was like, oh, I never thought of that matchup. That's a good matchup. No, it fucking sucks. You know, and I don't know if they're... Can you even think of a safer or weaker fucking opponent that Danny can take on? Um, this fight is clearly being made because it's a safe fight for Danny. Um, it'll sell good. I, I fucking would bet anything this fight's taking place at the Barclays Center. You know, Danny will sell tickets at the Barclays. Um, you know, he'll have all his Philly people coming up. He'll have people from Jersey and all, the whole the area, New York. Uh, big Spanish community. And Paulie, a New Yorker. You're going to have all the New York people coming out. So the fight will do good. Uh, it'll do good. You know, plus it puts a little Spanish-Italian rivalry in the mix. That, that, that'll add a little something. So it'll sell good at the Barclays. That's the only place I can possibly see this fight. It sure ain't happening in fucking Vegas or anything like that. You know, um, I mean, it could happen somewhere else, but this the seating would be super small. You know, if they want to sell decent tickets, it got to take place at the Barclays Center. Um, you know, that's, you ain't selling that amount of tickets anywhere else for this fight. Nowhere else. Because the fight's trash. It's fucking trash. You know, Paulie ain't done shit for how long you know, was the Zap Judah fight anything? Uh, I don't I don't think so. Uh, Broner, close fight. A uh, decision could have gone either way. Unfortunately, you know, he got the L. Well, actually, it's fucking fortunate he got the L. Um, 
and his girl taken, but I have to always say that shit with Paulie. Um, side piece, whatever. Well, he took the most, you know, the most vicious KO we've seen in a, you know, a while. Um, in his last fight, I mean, he got knocked the fuck silly from Porter. Hasn't fought since. And now he's going to fight, you know, Garcia. I mean, we got to look at this, man. Danny, that's why this fight really irks me. Because this is the so-called, you know, 140-pound ring champion. You know how many guys have been waiting since 2013 to get a crack at his ass? And none of them get the crack? You know, I mean, they did, but they got screwed. All right, that's the thing. You know, Herrera, screwed. Uh, you know, Salka, shit cherry pick. That fight shouldn't even happen. So someone should have got a shot there. Screw. Uh, Lamont Peterson. Most people thought he won that fight. I agree it was close, but I don't see how the fuck Danny gets the W. So, again, screw. You know, it, it, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. Uh, if you want to say Danny had a draw, uh, maybe. But I thought from the sixth round on, you know, it was clear. Uh, Lamont pretty much won every round, and there's no way you couldn't have gave him at least one round out of them first five. So, you know, it's basically an 8-4, 7-5 fight for uh, Lamont. Um, I don't know. That, that fight, that scoring was bullshit, as far as I'm concerned. I know some people did have it for Danny, but whatever. Uh, we can all have our opinions. It doesn't matter. Um... I just don't know if there's a safer or weaker fucking fight. You know, who can Danny beat at 147? I mean, you can run down a list. Uh, I mean, do you think he even beats uh, Amir Khan at 147 now? Because I don't. I don't. Um, I just don't. You know, I, I just can't, man. I can't, you know. Does Danny land that? Because uh, that, that was a lucky shot. He had his eyes closed. Uh, watch it. You know, they show the replay. His eyes were closed. He just threw a fucking haymaker. Didn't know where it was going. And it happened to land up on his, you know, like his temple area. And that's what fucked Khan's equilibrium all up. Doesn't mean Danny wouldn't have won eventually because Khan was fighting that fight all fucked up. Um, no, but I really think uh, Virgil would, you know, they went into that Garcia fight, or I mean, uh, Khan went into that Algeria fight expecting to fight a boxer, and he got in with an aggressor. With Danny, they know exactly what they're going to get. Um, so they'd be more prepared, you know, and Khan would be more prepared. He would take this fight serious, uh, very serious. Not that he didn't take that one serious, because he did, but we heard all the rumors that they only really started to buckle down three weeks out. Um, so, you know. And plus, we'd probably get a lot of con holding every time Danny got inside. Uh, I don't know. That's maybe the only guy he beats. Who else? I mean, who else? No one. No one, man. Like, if he's leaving 140, I can't see the where they think this welterweight uh, campaign is going to go. Like, or, and especially... If he's going to be fighting Paul in August, you know, and clearly he can't fight Floyd in September, or will that Paul fight get scratched and somehow he'll fight Floyd? I, I don't know, man, because it is a possibility. Um, but, uh, and now we hear that the rumors that Cotto and Canelo is going to be on September 12th, um, you know, and I'm pretty sure that now that is, you know, I was kind of thinking that's what Shane was already tweeting, and now it's coming out that that's the date they're looking at. You know, the contracts ain't signed yet, but apparently that's the date um, they're looking at. So, and we heard HBO wants no parts to to fuck with Showtime and cause a rift like that. But uh, you know, if they put that fight in the contract, you really think HBO isn't gonna buy the fight? Uh, you know, the, of course they're gonna take it. You know, and of course, even if it's in their contract, they're gonna say, yeah, whatever, uh, we'll take it, we'll do it. So I, I don't know, man. That's gonna cause major problems. And I don't think Garcia, if they do that, is what I'm saying. I don't think Garcia is a good enough opponent for Floyd um, to not get. 
blown, you know, to get his numbers blown out the water. He's going to have to fight somebody better than Danny. But I don't even know if Floyd cares. You know, it's the last fight on his contract. He already paid back Showtime with the Pacquiao fight. So I don't know, man. The thing about this Danny fight, though, that I find uh, pretty interesting is them picking Pauly tells you the confidence level that Heyman and all those guys and Danny Garcia, Team Garcia, has for Danny. I mean, if this is the, the you know, the opponent that they want and you know, that they're even looking at, because beating Pauly does nothing for Danny Garcia. He's supposed to beat him. You know, and, and so to, to look for that fight really means their confidence level is shot. Shot. You know, what is, you got to think, man, what's he done since 2013? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, pretty much two L's and Salka. Salka, that fight, you know, epitomized the cherry pick. I mean, it actually became like the, the word upset. How, you know, upset was a horse who, you know, won a race he wasn't supposed to win. And ever since then, people said he pulled an upset. It's now, oh, he's pulling a Salka. You know, I mean, come on, man. Algeri. Do you think Danny Garcia even beats Algeri at 147? No. I don't think he does. Do you even think he beats him at 140? I, I don't think he does. I don't. I don't. Um, yeah, I think Danny's pretty much screwed, man. And I, I'm on the record months back, you know. Uh, that's shit. A long time ago, man, talking about um, you know, what's what's Danny going to do, um, you know, since around the Lamont Peterson fight time. Uh, I, I said he was going to vacate. I said that he was not going to fight Postal because he would get his fucking head jabbed off, uh, you know, and, and he would lose, you know, period. So, and especially <laughs> with the outcome and the pasting he took in that fight, his confidence level is shook, shook, um, and I, I would have to say shattered, you know, because they had the Herrera fight, and his confidence level was flying high going into that fight, and then he loses. Um, Rob, he lost. Then he takes a cherry pick to get his confidence level up. It that was too big of a cherry pick to do anything for his confidence level. Then he gets a shellacking by Lamont Peterson. I mean, his confidence level has just been dropping. So they do need a confidence booster. Uh, I can see that. But if you want to go around saying you won uh, both of those fights and, you know, you're the best 140-pounder out there, then guess what? You don't need a cherry-pick fight. You, know, you don't. Herrera was supposed to be a cherry-pick fight. They looked at that fight like a cherry-pick. That's why they took it to Puerto Rico. They said, oh, we'll have our homecoming put on a great show. You know, beat a guy with a name. And then, you know, come back with a big fight. It didn't work out that way. It didn't work out that way. You know, Danny should have even been, he shouldn't, he should have been stripped of his WB, uh, WBC title. He should have really been stripped of his WBA, too, um, with the Lamont Peterson fight. You know, you get a voluntary uh, fight. You know, that voluntary fight was Soka. And... Juan Peterson was at a catch weight, you know, playing it simple. So that and the title wasn't on the line for either one. That's it. You're done. You're out of here, right? But the WBC let him slide uh, because they donated, you know, some money out of a out of the to, to a Nevada, um, you know, Nevada State Athletic Commission charity. So they let it go as a special event because there was some money donated to charity. Uh, Whatever, you know, it was, uh, I never even knew that existed. But, you know, the WBC continues to just pull rules out of its hat. Uh, you know, it was, the, you know, they let dude hold two titles in two different divisions. You know, that's a clear rule that since Hen Hank Armstrong held the three titles in three different divisions, you know, they made it a rule in boxing that nobody could ever hold you know, the multiple titles in different divisions uh, without, you know, for a long period, they have to make up their mind and pick one or the other. 
because it, it blocks other fighters from getting their shot. Um, you know, because you can only defend one. You can only defend one. So, yeah. But it, it goes on. WBC, don't give a shit. Don't give a shit, man. They make whatever rules that they want. You know. I just really look at it like, is Danny even, um, is Danny even top ten? No? Top ten? Um, what? Top five. Let's put it that way. Outside of the champions. Okay, you got the, you know, Terrence Crawford. Um, that's really the only other world champion at the moment at 140. But, you know, whether you would say um, Herrera. Uh, he, let's just say Herrera would have that WBC title. Or even if he don't, I mean, do, do you really put him? And he hasn't done anything since 2013. You know, he hasn't. So he can't be, a, how's he a top five guy? How, if you haven't done anything since 2013, and if in your book he lost to Herrera and Lamont, you know, he got two L's and a cherry pick since Matisse. But that's, you're at the bottom of the rankings. You know, you're, you're at the bottom. And at 147, He's clearly at the bottom, um, you know, <laughs> and especially if you give him them two L's. I mean, he's, I, I don't even, is he even top 15? It's crazy. It's crazy, man. You know, and after, after that, all the, you know, the, the Herrera, Soka, Lamont Peterson, all that shit, man, his team must have really said, we can't fight anybody with a fucking pulse. We can't fight anyone to want to pose. You know, get us a bum. Um, and they needed to sell something on the, like the PBC. So they couldn't just pick out anybody with no name. They needed somebody with a name that people have heard before. So they figured, hey, you know, get a New Yorker. You know, feather fisted. Um, admittedly, doesn't have his legs anymore. I mean, Paulie said his legs are done. Um, you know, come on, man. There's no danger in this fight. Uh, this will, you know, we know that Paulie's working with Haradia now, right? So if that can bring his, you know, give him his legs back, it'll be a glorified sparring session because Paulie will just avoid everything like crazy, try to out jab him, um, and it'll be a glorified sparring session because no one's going to get hurt, you know, n nothing. Now, if Paulie doesn't have his legs, it could be a big KO win for Danny because Paulie will just be, you know, a sitting duck. Danny can be a bull and just fire away with, you know, nothing to worry about coming back. Uh, you know, nothing to worry about coming back because Danny does have a good chin and Paulie can't break an egg. So he, he don't have no worries there. Um, he can just fire and fire and fire and hopefully, you know, some lands. Bam, then jump on him, gets his nice KO. Uh, you know, and that does whatever it does. I don't even know what knocking out Paulie does for you at this point. You know, what does it do? Guys have fought in a year, and in his last fight, he got brutally KO'd. You know, brutally. I mean, and, and his Paulie's chin even still good, you know, because he, after he got knocked out by Porter, he accused Porter of fucking steroid use because he said his punches, he never felt punches like that before. Um, and he fought, you know, Kodo, and like he said, I fought Kodo, and, you know, big punchers, and he never felt punches like that, so his chin could have just been going. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, the, the wind does nothing, does nothing, man. Uh, they're gonna have to even put a pretty fucking good undercard on that to, to get any viewers. You know, tickets will sell. It's New York, the New York boxing scene is good. Um, you know, plus you have Jersey, Philly, the, you know, Garcia fans will come out and watch that fight. Um, you'll get Paulie, guys. New York, that, that scene still likes Paulie. I'm sorry. Uh, let me finish this up. I mean, basically, you know, come on, man. Why, you know, why do we let these fucking so-called champions, right? Champions, man, act like cowards. Act like fucking cowards. You want to go up. You know, you've already worked your way up, right? That Lamont Peterson fight was to get you acclimated to welterweight, right? 
So why do you take on Pauly? You can't say, oh, I got to get acclimated. Let's take a welterweight on him. Get acclimated. You don't have to take a top guy on, though. No. You know, take, I don't take a fucking, you know, any welterweight on. Someone that had one of them top 15, you know, uh, that's plenty of guys. Heyman has plenty of welterweights, first of all. You know, you, you can make a fight. You can make a fight. Uh, it's, you know, whatever. Or just stay at 140 and fight Postal. Like you're fucking supposed to do. You know, why do we let these guys, so-called champions, act like fucking cowards, cherry pickers, and watch this shit, man? Like, why do we? I do it, too. You know, I watch this shit. Um, I guess it's just, you know, we want boxing. So we'll watch fucking any, anything. As long as guys have gloves on their fucking hands, we'll watch it. It's nuts. And I understand it. You know, but it's at the same time, man, we are the reason these guys do this shit. And then we bitch about it, you know. Like, whoa, why are they cherry picking? But then, you know, we tune into it, and then they're like, hey, I guess we can cherry pick again. People bought tickets, people watched it. You know, it's a niche sport, so you watch whatever you can get. You know, I'm about to just, anytime a fucking cherry pick fight comes on, I'm about to just go to YouTube and watch an old fight instead. You know, and just say, I'll get my boxing fix elsewhere. You know, it's just, it's crazy, man. You know, Fuck it, man. Fuck it, dude. Dude should have two L's and and, and be, you know, nowhere. Shouldn't have any belts. You know, someone else should be ring champion. You know, now it's going to, people are going to be, they ain't going to be a fucking ring champion for a minute. Um, you know, people are going to be, you know, fucking avoiding each other. I mean, I hope Crawford can just clean up down there. Or at least get his a chance to clean up down there. I hope the winner of this fight actually fights Crawford. You know, that way we can get, uh, you know, someone grabbing his UB, uh, WBC belt up, unify it with the WBO. And depending on what Vargas is doing, I don't know what the fuck's going on there. I might imagine if he loses, he's just going to stay WBA world champ. I don't know. Then, you know. Hopefully we can get the winner of that to fight him. Then we would have a WBA super champ and he'd be on everything but the IBF. And that would clearly be a lineal champion. You know, uh, he'd at least be the ring champion. I would think that that would be a lineal champion by then. So, you know. And then we would have a clear champ that everyone has to go through. But now it's going to be a clusterfuck down there. Um... And Danny, I don't see him having success at 147. I don't see him having success anywhere, really. I don't. 140, got, you know, Crawford takes his head off. 147, what are they going to do? Feed him to Thurman. Thurman will take his head off. I don't know what the fuck they, their plans are for him up there, man. It seems like a dumb move to take him to 147 to me. You know, because I don't know who he beats up there. Um, that's... You know, that's the thing. What the fuck are they doing? What are they going to do at welterweight? Who do you think, he, you know, is the, the fight they're going after um, at 147? Who can he have success with up there? You know, what do you think about, you know, why did he leave? Do you think it's weight? Do you think it's a uh, fear of competition? But welterweight has severe competition. You know, I'd say more dangerous competition. So... <laughs> I don't know, man. I figured I'd just speak on this. So, Thunderdome Boxing Talk, let me know what you know, man. What you think of this. Shit, peace.